Are you ready to rock and roll? Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Okay. And uh, thank you for doing this today. After this, we have uh, two more sessions. Amazingly. We got it through. Yes, indeed. That will be amazing. Just achieving that much will be incredible. Uh, this evening and this morning for Kushbu, we are going to read the 18th discourse of the Bhagavad Gita. And at least one of these versions calls this love in action, the 18th discourse. It is the last discourse. And we will be reading uh, three, we will re read it in three sessions. So today we're going to read uh, verses one through 25. And I'm reading from the Bhagavad Gita, translated by Laurie Patton, uh, the president of Middlebury, Middlebury College in the Penguin Classic. I'm reading from the Skylight Illuminations Bhagavad Gita, which is translated by Sri Purohit Swami and annotated by Kendrick Cross and Barrows. And I'm reading from Bhagavad Gita by R.K. Sharma with Carol Pitts and Les Morgan. And the third one is the only one that has the actual Sanskrit in it with the translations of the words. So I don't know if you can see that, but the actual Devanagari, uh, the actual letters, the Sanskrit letters, they're there. That's it. It is the last discourse in the Bhagavad Gita, Love and Action. The 18th, uh, so Sloka 1, Sloka 1. Arjuna cha sanya sayasya mahabaho tattva michami vedi tuma tyagasya cha hashi kesha pru keshi nishudana shri bhagava nubha shri bhagava nuvacha kamyana karmanana nyasa Sanyasa Kavayo Viduhu Sarva Karma Falatyagaha Prahu Syatya Yanga Vicha Yagyaha Slok 1 and 2. The patent reads Arjuna said, Strong armed one, I want to know, taking each one by itself, the way it really is, first in renunciation and then in letting go, bristle-haired one, killer of Kishin. The Blessed One said, The poets know that the leaving aside of action based on desire is renunciation, and the clear-sighted see, and the clear-sighted see that the giving up of all fruit of such action is called letting go. The prose reads, Arjuna said, O mighty one, I desire to know how relinquishing is distinguished from renunciation. Lord Sri Krishna replied, The sages say that renunciation means foregoing an action which springs from desire, and relinquishing means the surrender of its fruit. The footnote reads, Renunciation is samyasa. Relinquishing is chaga, abandonment, which means internal renunciation and does not imply non-action. In India especially, people commonly understand chaga to mean giving up worldly possessions and obligations, whereas the Gita takes absolutely the opposite view, that the real chaga has action and living in the world as its basis and not a fight to the monastery, not a flight to the monastery, the cave or the hilltop. The real chaga is action with a renunciation of desire, and that too is real samyasa, according to Aurobindo. Sharma reads, Arjuna said, 
O long-armed one, I want to know the essence of renunciation, samyasa, separately from the essence of relinquishment, tyaga, O Hrikesha, O slayer of the demon Kation. The Blessed Lord said, the sages consider renunciation, samyasa, to be the setting aside of actions motivated by desire. The learned ones say relinquishment, tyaga, is relinquishment of the fruit of all action. And there's a footnote. The words samyasa, renunciation, and tyaga, relinquishment, are technical terms with similar meanings. Arjuna asked for clarification on how they differ. The distinction is that samyasa is giving up the performance of actions that are motivated by desire, while tyaga is giving up the fruits of all actions, but not necessarily their performance. Sloka three. Sloka three and four. Tyajiya okay. um, dosha davi tyayeke karma prahurma nishi naha yagya dana tapaha karma na tyajiya miti chapare nishya shrunu me tatra Tyage Bharata Sattama Tyago Hi Puru Purusha Vyadra Trividha Sampra Krititaha Slok 3 and 4. The pattern reads Some who are wise say that action is full of wrong and should be let go, and others say that what act and others say that action made up of heated discipline, giving and sacrifice should not be let go. Best of the Bharatas, hear my final thought about this question of letting go. Letting go is also well known as threefold, tiger among men. Prose reads, some philosophers say that all action is evil and should be abandoned. Others say that acts are of sacrifice, benevolence, and austerity should not be given up. O oh, best of Indians, listen to my judgment as regards this problem. It is, three, uh, it is a threefold aspect. The Sharma reads, some wise persons say, that action full of defects should be relinquished. Others say that action related to sacrifices, charity and austerities should not be relinquished. O oh, best of Bharatas, listen to my final conclusion with regard to re relinquishment. Relinquishment truly is declared to be of three categories, O oh, tiger of men. Shloka five. Yagya dana tapaha karma nya tyajyaya karma meva tata yagyo dana tapashreva pavanani mani shinama. Slok 5. Acts of heated discipline, giving and sacrifice are not to be let go, but rather carried out. For heated discipline, giving, and sacrifice are purifiers of the wise. <clears throat> that was the pattern. The prose reads, acts of sacrifice, benevolence, and austerity should not be given up, but should be performed, for they purify the aspiring soul. The Sharma reads, Acts relating to sacrifice, charity, and austerity must not be relinquished. Indeed, they must be done. Sacrifice, charity, and austerity are surely purifiers of wise persons. Shloka 6. Etanayapi tu karmani shadanka tyakvatvava Falani cha karma vyaniti 
मी पार्थ निश्चित मत मुक्त मम श्लोक सिक्स The pattern reads, but son of Prita, these very actions are to be carried out after one has let go of clinging to the fruits. This is without a doubt my highest thought. The prose reads, but they should be done with detachment and without thought of recompense. This is my final judgment. the sharma reads but even these actions should be done after relinquishing attachment and fruits this is without a doubt my best opinion o son of priti prita o son of prita shloka 7 7 to 10 are together niyat niyatasya tu sanyasah कर्मणो नोपपधते मोहात्तस्य परित्याग स्तामसः परिकीर्तितः दुःखमित्वेव यत्कर्मण कायक्लेश भया त्यजेत सर्कुसात सर्कुत्वा राजसह त्यागः नैव त्यागः फलः लभेत कर्मामित्वे यत्कर्म नियतः क्रीडतेद जुर्न संडक त्यक्तवा फलः चैव स त्यागः सर्तिकतो मतः न देष्ट कुशलः कर्म कुशले नानु षष्ट जते त्यागी सत्व समाविष्टो मेघावी छिन्न संभव यह श्लोक सेवन टू टेन पैटर्न रीड्स बट रिनंसिएशन ऑफ प्रिस्क्राइब्ड एक्शन इज नॉट फिटिंग द लेटिंग गो ऑफ सच एक्शन इज सेड टू बी थमासिक एंड अराइजेस फ्रॉम कंफ्यूजन द वन हु लेट्स गो ऑफ एन एक्शन बिकॉज़ ऑफ डिफिकल्टी और फियर ऑफ बॉडीली पेन thus carries out letting go in a rajasic way and will not attain the fruit of that letting go arjuna when prescribed action is carried out because it is simply to be done when one has to let has let go of clinging to the fruit this letting go is thought to be sattvic the intelligent one who lets go cuts away doubt and is filled with truth that one does not cling to auspicious action and does not hate inauspicious action the prose reads it is not right to give up actions which are obligatory and if they are misunderstood and ignored it is the result of sheer ignorance to avoid an action through fear of physical suffering because it is likely to be painful is to act from passion and the benevolent of and the benefit of renunciation will not follow he who performs an obligatory action because he believes it to be a duty which ought to be done without any personal desire either to do the act or to receive any return such renunciation is pure the wise man who has attained purity whose doubts are solved who is filled with the spirit of self abnegation does not shrink from action because it brings pain nor does he desire it be, nor does he desire it because it brings pleasure And there's a footnote obligatory actions include the rites rituals and other acts of worship such as service or penitence commanded by scripture but these ought not to be performed mechanically or regarded as ends in themselves for most persons spiritual sadhana or practice consists in the external observance of rituals and ceremonies prescribed by their own religion in the initial stages such observance has its own value as a factor contributing towards self purification and mental discipline 
But ultimately, the aspirant, the aspirant has to transcend the phase of external com conformity and become initiated into the deeper aspects of spiritual sadhana. When this happens, the external aspects of religion falls into the background and the aspirant gets interested in the essential revealed in all the great religions, according to Meyer Baba. Sharma reads, but it is not advisable to renounce required action. Relinquishment of it out of delusion is considered to be dominated by Thomas. One who relinquishes action because it is difficult or due to fear of bodily pain, he, having made relinquishment dominated by rajas, surely would not obtain the reward for true relinquishment. O oh, Arjuna, whatever assigned duty is done only because it ought to be done, relinquishing attachment and rewards, that relinquishment is considered to be dominated by sattva. The wise relinquisher dominated by sattva, free from all doubts, neither hates unfavorable action nor is attached to favorable action. Sloka 11. Om e deha bhruta shaktaha tyaktu karmana yeshataha pastu karma phala tyagi sa tyagi tya bhidhi yate Slok 11. The pattern reads, Indeed, the one who bears a body is not able to let go of actions entirely. The one who lets go of the fruit of action is called a tiagi. The prose reads, But since those still in the body cannot entirely avoid action, in their case, abandonment of the fruit of action is considered a complete renunciation. The karma reads, truly it is not possible for an embodied person to relinquish actions completely, but one who relinquishes the fruits of actions is called a relinquisher. And as a footnote, see verse 3.5. Shloka 12. Anisha Anishta Mishtaha Mishra Cha Trividaha Karmanaha Falama Bhavatya Tyagina Pretya Na Tu Sanyasina the patent reads, for those who do not let go when they die, the fruit of action exists in three kinds, wanted, unwanted, and mixed together. But for those who let go, there is no fruit at all. The prose reads, for those who cannot renounce all desire, the fruit of action hereafter is threefold, good, evil, and partly good, and partly evil. But for him who has renounced, there is none. The Sharma reads, undesirable, desirable, and mixed. These are the threefold results of actions after death for those who do not relinquish but not whatsoever for the renouncers. There's a footnote. See also Pandangjali's Yoga Sutra 4.7, Karma Sukla Akrashnam Yoginas Trividam Itarasham. The actions of wise yogins are neither white nor black, favorable or unfavorable. In the case of others, the karmas are of three kinds, that is, 
white black and a mixture of white and black and uh, the next says uh, shloka 13 and 14 are together till 16 okay okay 13 through 16 padetani mahabaho karanani nibodhame sankhye krutante potanti siddhaye sarvaka marnama adhishthanata tatha karta karana cha prithagya dharma vividhashti pushtako chashta deva chevatra padvya mama sharira vadama nobhir yat karma yat karma prarabhe nara nyayam va viparitam va paschate tasya hetavah traveta sati karmarama matma na kevala tu yaha pashyatya kruta buddhitvana sa pashyati durmatihi Slok uh, 13, 14, 15, and 16. The patent reads, Strong Arm One, awaken to these five causes taught by me and told in the teachings of Samkhya for the fulfillment of all actions. The body as the place of action, the agent, the means of different kinds and different motions, each unique and divine will, the fifth cause. These are the five causes of whatever actions one begins with mind, word, or body, whether customary or contrary to custom. This being true, the one who sees his own self as the only agent is hard-headed and does not see because of insight, which is incomplete. The prose reads, I will tell you how, O oh mighty man, the five causes which, according to the final decision of philosophy, must concur before an action can be accomplished. They are a body, a personality, physical organs, their manifold activity, and this destiny. Whatever action a man may perform, whether by muscular effort or by speech or by thought, and whether it be right or wrong, these five are the essential causes. But the fool who supposes, because of his immature judgment, that it is his own self alone that acts, he perverts the truth and does not see rightly. And there are two footnotes. Philosophy, literally the Samkhya doctrine, and the second one, personality, kartri, agent of action, doer. The doer is ordinarily supposed to be our surface personal ego, but that is a false idea of the understanding that has not arrived at knowledge. The ego is the ostensible doer, but the ego and its will are the creations and instruments of nature with which the ignorant understanding wrongly identifies ourself, and they are not the only determinants, according to out of window. And the Sharma reads, O long-armed one, learn from me the five causes for the accomplishment of all actions as taught in the Sankhya school, the foundation as well as the agent, the instruments of various types, various efforts, and the fifth is truly fate. Whatever action a person initiates with body, speech, or mind, whether rightful or otherwise, these are its five causes. This being so, one who, due to imperfect understanding, instead views himself alone as the doer, 
that ignorant person does not have the right perspective. And there's a footnote, compare verses 13.29 and 14.19, Sloka 17. Seventeen and eighteen. Yashya Naha Krutu Bhavo Dirbu Yasya Ma Liate Hatvapi Sa Imako Kalana Hanti Na Nivadhyane Gyana Yegya Parijata Trividha Karma Chodana Karmana Karma Karmeti Trividha Karma Sangraha Sloke 17 and 18. One who has no sense of mind and whose insight is not stained, that one is not bound and does not kill, even when he kills these very people. The three kinds of impulses for action are the wisdom of knowledge, the knower, and that which is to be known. The three factors of action are the agent, the act, and the means. That was the pattern. The prose reads, He who has no pride and whose intellect is unalloyed by attachment, even though he kill these people, Yet he does not kill them, and his act does not bind him. Knowledge, the knower, and the object of knowledge, these are the threefold incentives to action. And the act, the actor, and the instrument are the threefold constituents. The Sharma reads, a person who does not act with a sense of ego and whose intellect is not tainted by desires or attachments. That person neither slays nor is bound even after killing these people. There's a footnote. This does not mean that extreme actions can be committed indiscriminately. People acting from egoism or with attachments and desires cannot produce good results. However, good results come when a person is truly conscious of oneness with the Supreme and when that person has no ulterior motives. The reference to these peoples brings us back to the practical reality of the battlefield, which is the setting of these teachings. As the chapter concludes, the original problem that was set in chapter one is resolved. See verses 18. 59 and 1873. Then verse 18. Knowledge, the object of knowledge, and the knower are the threefold instigators of action. The instrument of action, the object of action, and the agent are the threefold constituents of action. Sloka 19. Nineteen to twenty-two. Okay. Um, jnana, karma, chati, cha, tridheva, guna, bhedataha, prochyate, guna, sang, sang, sankhyane, yatha, vartaku, chatu, tatnapi, sarva, bhuteshu, yeneka, Bhavama vya yamikshate avin bhata vibhaktakeshu tajya jnana vidhi satvika kama prutha kyatvena tu yagya jnana nana bhava nyushu thargiva dhana Veti, Sarveshu, Bhuteshu, Tagya Jnana, Vidhi, Raja Sama, Yatu, Kutaranda, Vadeka, 
स्मी नरकाये सक्त महे तुकम अत त्वार्थ वदलपे च तत्ताम समुदा रतम श्लोक नाइन्टी टू ट्वेंटी टू The patent reads, in accounting for the gunas, it is told that wisdom of knowledge, action, and means are also threefold distinguished by gunas. Listen properly to these also. That wisdom of knowledge by which one sees the imperishable in all beings and the whole in munis multiplicities, recognize that wisdom is sattvic. But that wisdom, which understands different natures of different kinds, each separate in all th beings, recognize that wisdom as rajasic. But that which clings to only one action to be done without motive, trifling, or without true aim, that is said to be tamasic. The prose reads. The knowledge, the act, and the doer differ according to the qualities. Listen to the, listen to this too. That knowledge which sees the one indestructible in all beings, the one indivisible, in all separate lives, may be truly called pure knowledge. The knowledge which thinks of the manifold existence in all beings as separate. This comes from passion. But that which clings blindly to one idea, as if it were all without logic, truth, or insight, that has its origin in darkness. Footnote here: the essence of the Gita is what you get by repeating the word ten times. The word becomes reversed; it is then tagi, which refers to renunciation. The essence of the Gita is: O oh man, renounce everything and practice spiritual discipline for the realization of God, according to Ramakrishna. And the Sharma reads: Knowledge, action, and the agent are also of three types, depending on the distribution. Of the gunas, as it is said appropriately in the theory of the gunas, listen to them also. Know that knowledge by which a person sees one immutable, unfragmented essence in all fragmented beings to be sattva dominated. On the other hand, that knowledge which divisively apprehends different entities of separate kinds in all beings. Know that knowledge as rajas dominated, but that knowledge which is attached without reason to one partial object, as it were, the entire world, far from the truth and trivial, is said to be tamas dominated. Or maybe we should do twenty-three to the end. Yeah, it is anyway together here. Yeah. All right. So, so. Twenty-three to twenty-five. Niyataha sada rahi tama raga desha taha krutama afala prepsuna karma yata tasa chivaka kamu chayate yatu kame shishu karma sah karane va punaha. क्रियते बहुलायासम महादारभ्यते कर्म यतताम समुच्यते श्लोक ट्वेंटी थ्री ट्वेंटी फोर ट्वेंटी फाइव That action which is free from clinging and restrained, performed without hatred or desire, without longing to acquire the fruit, that action is said to be sattvic. But that action performed with longing to acquire, with a strong sense of I, or further, 
with much striving is said to be rajasic. That action begun because of delusion without heeding the consequences or the effects of power or loss or inquiry is said to be tamasic. That was the pattern. The prose reads, an obligatory action done by one who is disinterested, who neither likes it nor dislikes it, and gives no thought to the consequences that follow, such an action is pure. But even though an action involved the most strenuous endeavor, yet if the doer is seeking to gratify his desires and is filled with personal vanity, it may be assumed to originate in passion. An action undertaken through delusion and with no regard to the spiritual issues involved or to the real capacity of the doer or to the injury which may follow, such an action may be assumed to be the product of ignorance. And the Sharma reads, an assigned action which is done without attachment, without likes or dislikes, by a person free from desire for results, that is said to be dominated by sattva. On the other hand, that action which is done by one longing for fulfillment of desires, or again by one with a sense of ego, performed with too much strain, is considered to be dominated by rajas. That action which is initiated out of delusion, disregarding consequences, harm, violence, and one's own power, is said to be dominated by Thomas. Okay, so that completes verses 1 through 25 of Discourse 18. And Discourse 18 goes on to 78 verses total. So this is the first day of our reading on uh, Discourse 18, and we will continue again soon. And so, uh, thank you very much, Kushbu. Uh, thank that, you. That was a very meaningful reading to me. Uh, so today, at the end, we were talking about the types of actions. So tomorrow or the next time, we're going to take up the types of actors. So anyway, have a great Saturday, Kushbu. Uh, for those thank of you... you. Yeah, for those of you who aren't familiar with the distances between the United States and India, for me, it's 11 o'clock at night. For Kushbu, it's 8.30 in the morning. Otherwise, other times we often read, for me, at 10 in the morning and for Kushbu at 7.30 in the evening. So there's lots of stresses going back and forth so that we can be sure to be able to read at the same time. So thank you again, Kushbu. I will mm -hmm. see you on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So bye peace. Bye. And, peace. Yep. Peace. Take care. Mm -hmm.